Mr. O, here with another oh, wow. moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. This is the cranks and cams component in our Inventure Convention exhibit, sponsored by the David and Jean Wiley Foundation. This is one of my favorite pieces because it has cool mechanisms, just like this one, to help you invent your own toy. Toys that use these sorts of mechanisms to create movement are sometimes called automata. Basically, the mechanisms in the box creates a predetermined motion. That motion affects how the toy behaves. It's a bit like inventing your own miniature puppet show. You make your scene and your characters and attach them to the mechanism. Then, turn the crank to test the mechanism and see how it moves. Now, don't tell anyone I told you, but you don't actually need to come here to invent like this, especially don't tell our box office manager. All you need are some simple materials, a little know-how, and some imagination, and you can invent great things just like this. Time to put those Amazon boxes to use. Remember, inventing is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. We're gonna be building cardboard automata toys, like this one. Now there are lots of different kinds of automata and lots of different mechanisms we can build, but we're gonna focus on cams for this one. Cams are mechanisms that turn circular motion into linear motion. Basically, cams are wheels attached to an axle. When the axle turns, the cam spins. That's circular motion. That movement causes the cam followers, rods that sit on top of the cams, to move up and down. That's linear motion. Cams are used in many different machines, from internal combustion engines, to metal cutting, to food production machines. So there are lots of different cam and cam combinations. For today's project, I'm gonna show you how to build one basic cam and cam follower mechanism, but I'll also show you lots of different variations you can make on it so that you can invent all on your own. So let's get inventing. To invent with cardboard automata, you'll need corrugated cardboard boxes like shipping boxes. Smaller ones around six inch by six inch work well, but you can also cut larger ones down to size. You'll also need drinking straws, wooden skewers, and metal washers. For tools, you'll need a ruler, a compass, I'm using this safety compass. You can also just use a variety of round objects to trace, a nice sharp pencil, adult scissors, and a hot glue gun. You'll want lots of craft supplies so that you can fully decorate up your cardboard automata when done. Remember, today you're gonna to be using sharp scissors to cut through that cardboard, so be very careful not to cut yourself and make sure an adult is helping you. Also, just a reminder, your hot glue gun does get hot. Not just the gun, but also the glue. So make sure to have an adult helping you at all times. First, we'll need to cut out our frame. We'll start with a simple six inch wide by six inch tall by three inch deep frame. If you already have a six inch by six inch box, you can start by cutting off the flaps. Don't recycle them yet, we'll need them for later. Next, measure three inches down each edge and make a mark. Connect the marks to make a cut line. Finally, cut along that line to make your frame. So if you don't have a small enough box, just go on to Amazon and order something really small. Or you can just cut one out of a larger box, like this. Cut the box into more manageable pieces, starting with the flaps. Start at the end of one of the longer two edges, measure six inches, and make a mark. Keep going until you've run out of space or you have four marks. Do the same thing on the opposite edge, starting at the same end. Then draw a line connecting your marks. Along the shorter edge where you started, measure three inches from the corner and make a mark. Repeat this on each of the lines you drew, starting from the same edge. Then draw a line connecting your marks. There, cut them out and repeat until you have four six inch by three inch rectangles. To make the frame, hot glue the short ends together to make a square. Your frame is done. So you may have noticed that your frame 
has a tendency to collapse, so we're going to need to reinforce it. Remember those flaps I told you not to recycle? Grab one of those and cut off the four corners to create four triangles, roughly one to one and a half inches on the shorter sides. Hot glue those triangles into the four corners near the edge of one side of your frame. The triangles provide more support to your frame and prevent it from collapsing. All right, time to make our cam. Draw a two and a half inch diameter circle on a piece of cardboard and cut it out. I'm using my compass, but a small jar or cup should get close to it. I want my cardboard automata to have an up and down motion. So instead of punching a hole in the center, I'm going to use a pencil to put a hole off center, closer to an edge. I'll show you why in a moment. In order to use the cam, we need to build the axle, the rod that the cam will be on. Get a skewer, careful of the pointy end. To add a handle, cut out a small rectangle and glue it to the blunt end of the skewer. Then cut off a two inch piece of the second stick and glue it to the cardboard. We will also need some stops to prevent the axle from sliding in the holes. I'm using a compass to measure out two one inch diameter circles. You can also trace a screw top from a bottle. Punch holes in the center of the stops using your pencil. To install the cam and axle, we need to make some holes for it centered on the frame. The fastest way to find the center of a rectangle is to draw two diagonal lines from corner to corner. Where they meet is the center of the rectangle. Use your pencil to punch a hole in the center of the X you made. Repeat this process on the opposite side of the frame. The shaft will go through both holes. Now insert the cam axle into the frame. First insert it through one of the stops. Press the axle through the first hole, add the cam, push it through the opposite hole, and finally put the other stop on the far end. Give the handle a crank to test it. Pretty cool, right? But don't glue anything yet. We still have some adjustments to make. But do me a favor and watch what happens when I turn this handle. You see how the cam goes up and then down? That's going to give us our up and down motion once we add in the cam follower, which is our next step. It will then go up and down. To make a cam follower, we'll need to draw and cut out another cardboard circle. I'm making this one about two inches in diameter, but a little larger is okay. Punch a hole in the center, slide another skewer through the hole so that it's flat. Place a washer on top to give the follower a little extra weight to help it work better. Now, glue it all in place. Of course, we need to make a hole for the cam follower. Make your X and find the center then punch a hole in the top. Get a straw and cut a small piece off one end about one and a half to two inches. Put the straw into the hole. Make sure it sticks a little way out on both sides. Glue it in place. Insert the follower into the straw. Make sure to insert it from underneath. You may need to move your cam off to the side for this step. So we add the straw in so that the cam follower goes straight up and down, doesn't wobble around. All right, we're almost done. Adjust the axle in two stops so it spins freely and doesn't wobble. Glue the axle to the stops, not the frame. Cut off the pointy end of the axle. Now slide the cam over. I want my cardboard automata to go up and down, so I'm going to center my cam under the follower. Test it first and once it is the way you want it, glue the cam to the axle. Make sure to cut off the pointy end of your cam follower. If you want to reduce the height more, lower it before cutting. Otherwise, you may end up cutting off more than you want. So here's my completed cardboard automata. I added a bit of tape on top so you can follow the motion. So watch the cam here. As I spin it, the larger side turns up and that pushes up the follower. As I continue to spin it, the larger side goes down and that causes the follower to drop. So that creates our up and down motion. But there's lots of different ways that you can arrange your cam and follower to produce several different kinds of motion. For example, 
This cam is centered on the axle but off to the side of the follower so it goes in circles. This cam is off center of the axle and off to the side of the follower so it goes in circles and up and down. This cam is an oval shape so it goes up and down a bit faster. This cam is cut with a big drop on it so the follower goes up slowly and then drops. This has two cams on one follower, each off center, so it spins back and forth as it goes up and down. And on this one, I have two cams and two followers, so it's two different motions at the same time. And I almost forgot the most important part, the decorating, which is one of the best parts of all of this. So Cardboard Automata really lends itself towards inventing. The experimenting with the cams, the shape, the location, all leads to different kinds of motion. And that experimenting is at the heart of inventing. It's exploring, testing new ideas, seeing what works, and discovering new motions, in the case of our automata, that can lead you to invent something truly delightful. Like some of the things I've invented here. Sorry, I gotta take this. Hi girls, it's my daughters. Yeah, I'm in the middle of filming right now, so I can't really talk. Your cardboard automata? No, I haven't seen them anywhere. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from Children's Museum Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play.